you for the introduction. Hello. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Chen Zhen from uh, University of uh, South Carolina. Today, I'm going to present our work on neural machine translation inspired binary code uh, analysis. This is joint work with my collaborator, Dr. Lana Noor, and our students. My students are uh, fled back this morning, so it's me to present this. Uh, so first, why we care about cross-architecture, binary code, similarity comparison? Given a piece of a code, it may be compiled into binaries of different architectures. And uh, as a third-party security analyst, you probably have no access to the corresponding source code. However, with a technique like this, uh, binary code similarity comparison, you can re-establish this uh, relation, especially similarity relation between these uh, binaries. With that, you can do a lot of uh, very core cool tasks, like uh, vulnerability discovery, malware family identification, and uh, code plagiarism uh, detection. But this is a very challenging task, because binaries of uh, different architectures, actually they have uh, very different instruction sets, registers, memory addressing modes, calling conventions, and uh, combination optimizations. So what's the current research status? There are many two categories of uh, researches. The first category, they use uh, techniques like uh, uh, fuzzing, SMT solver, and uh, recompilation. So they tend to be slow. The second, second category, they either use uh, uh, traditional machine learning or deep learning. For example, Germany, they used, uh, they borrowed some techniques from the graph uh, area, and uh, they are much faster, and actually they are accurate at the function level. However, both uh, Genius and Gemini, they use some manually uh, extractive features to represent uh, this uh, base block. Uh, for example, the number of instructions, the number of function calls. Is that good enough? If we examine the accuracy uh, at the basic block level, we can see that the AUC actually is uh, 0.85. That definitely there's room to improve it. But how? Uh, we first examine what kind of information has been lost uh, during this uh, feature extraction. First, instruction meaning, right? Second, uh, instruction dependency. You can roughly understand as the order of these instructions. There's uh, two types of critical information actually is totally lost during this uh, feature extraction. So we want to come up with an approach that can recover this uh, critical information. How? Starting in 2016, we looked at uh, neural machine translation. And uh, what's, first, uh, let me first uh, briefly introduce what is a neural machine translation. Actually, it's uh, some technique that applies deep learning to uh, translating uh, human, human languages. And it was uh, first uh, proposed in 2014, although it's uh, uh, quite a new technique. It has already been widely deployed by companies like uh, Google and uh, Microsoft. Like this is an example. Uh, it's already been used in production systems because of uh, its high accuracy, of course. So uh, an MT system consists of uh, three main components. First, the word embedding model, which uh, converts each word in a sentence to a word embedding. Second, encoder for one language, like English here, they will encode all the word embeddings into one sentence embedding. It's amazing that this sentence embedding essentially is a vector of numbers. They can contain all the sentence information. That's how when you use a decoder for another language, for example, in this example, is German, they can be decoded, they can be converted into a sentence in another language. That's amazing. We noticed that a binary, once you disassemble it, you will end up with a piece of code represented using some assembly language. Since um, NMT can handle very sophisticated human languages uh, very well, could it also handle different uh, assembly languages? And uh, most specifically, could we apply NMT to this kind of uh, cross architecture code similarity comparison? That's definitely a very interesting pro, uh, approach, but there are tons of questions. First, 
It's very straightforward and natural to regard an instruction as a word. Um, however, if you if you examine the details of instructions, we can see that a lot of instructions contain like constant values, labels, string labels, function addresses. They, this will make uh, the vocabulary infinitely grow. And this, we definitely need to resolve this problem to make this approach feasible. Second, what should be regarded as a sentence, uh, like uh, in NLP, we regard a base block as a sentence. That's definitely arguable. People may argue that, why don't you directly uh, regard a function as a, as a sentence, like an NLP? Our argument is that a function essentially is uh, not a straight, straight line uh, instruction sequence. Instead, it's more, more precisely, it's a graph of uh, basic blocks. And the different components, different optimization levels will twist this graph in different ways. So it would be very fragile if you regard a function as a um, sentence. Corpus, that's a big problem because, a big challenge for us, because for NLP researchers, they have a large number of existing corpus to reuse. However, we don't. We need to collect this corpus ourselves from zero. How about the hardware? We all know that Google is rich. They can afford like a huge clusters. We are not. If this approach requires very expensive uh, hardware, then this approach will be impractical. Finally, is there any, some unique, interesting uh, application? Actually, we stopped in, uh, submitted this work, early version of this work, uh, last year, May, but it got rejected because the, uh, the, the reviewer suggests that we should come up with some interesting application. Right. So let's uh, start with uh, this uh, first problem, the in infinite vocabulary problem. If you look at this uh, piece of x86 code, you can obviously see this piece of code will contain constant value, label, and uh, the jump address. If we use this kind of uh, instructions to build our vocabulary, we will end up with uh, infinite vocabulary. So we propose this uh, instruction pre-processing step. Actually, it turns out very simple, but very effective. We essentially replace all the constant values with zero and uh, replace like uh, strings, function names, and other labels with a uh, specific uh, text. Does it work well? Yes. If you, if you look at this graph, the x-axis is the percentage of uh, uh, corpus we use, and the y-axis is the vocabulary size. And the blue curve shows the approach without pre-processing. You can see the vocabulary size goes very quickly. And the, the, the red one is the one with uh, pre-processing. You can see we can end up with a pretty small vocabulary, and actually it grows very slowly. Once the instructions are pre-processed, we uh, feed those instructions into a word to vector neural network, which is a type of a word embedding model. We didn't modify a single byte. Just the, the original word embedding neural network. It works. And um, the network, then the trained network is used to convert each pre-processed instruction into an instruction embedding. A more challenging uh, task is how to collect this corpus of uh, equivalent base blocks. It's a very unlike functions. With functions, you can use the function names to, to find these uh, equivalent functions, but base blocks, they do not have names. You can see this uh, pair of uh, base blocks. They wind from x86, wind from uh, ARM. Of course, you can hire people to label it for you, like uh, in the image area, uh, but we can do better, I think. Specifically, uh, we propose to modify the back ends of a compiler, for example, IVM back ends. Then we make sure the native basic block, they obtain the same unique ID as long as they come from, they are compiled from the same uh, IR base block. Then we use that ID information to establish this equivalence between, across, between the base blocks across architecture. Now, let's uh, examine the system design. If we directly apply the NMT approach, we will 
translates a piece of x86 code into a piece of ARM code, and then we end up with another problem. Then that is how to compare two pieces of ARM code, whether they are similar or not. Um, we, didn't, uh, we didn't follow that approach. Instead, we noticed that they are already NLP researchers. So they applied just the same uh, architecture to compare two sentences. So we followed uh, that way and uh, come up with uh, this design. Specifically, we use uh, this uh, Samis architecture with, uh, uh, with two LSTM networks. Each side can be regarded as the encoder in the NMT design. And uh, each encoder can convert uh, a base block into an embedding. Then by measuring the distance of the two embeddings, you can evaluate its uh, dis uh, similarity. So we promised an interesting application, right? So uh, we noticed that the prior cross-architecture binary analysis, they answer whether a piece of code is equivalent to another, but they do not answer whether a piece of code is contained in another program. Actually, the con code containment problem actually is very important. For example, a piece of vulnerable, co vulnerable code actually could be denied into a function. And uh, a malware author, they could reuse some loop uh, across their malware family. And uh, they, although this code containment problem actually in the, in the context of a single architecture is very popular and it has drawn a lot of attention, it's, it's, uh, it's surprising that it has never been explored in the cross-architecture uh, context. So this is the solution. To determine whether a piece of code is contained in a program, we decompose the control flow graph of uh, this piece, this of a query code, and into multiple paths. And for each path x, we use a longest common subsequence to find whether to find the a path in P that is the closest to the path x. Then, based on all, based on all the path scores, we calculate our final similarity score. Well, this technique actually was not proposed by this work. We do not claim that contrib contribution. Actually, it was uh, proposed by, by my collaborators' prior work, but they use a symbolic execution to establish the base block similarity comparison, and uh, they only consider single architecture binary code. We, however, applied this NMT-inspired uh, basic, basic block comparison so that it can be applied to cross-architecture binary code analysis, and it's much, much faster. Hardware. This is our hardware, seriously. We use uh, just a laptop with a 2.7 i7 and a 32 gigabyte RAM, no, no GPUs, yeah. And this is our data set. We collected uh, totally 400,000, around 400,000 Basic, basic block pairs, and we divided it into three data sets. Actually, we noticed that uh, previously some security and um, security researchers, they only use uh, the training and uh, the validation data set. We argue that test, if you make sure your testing data set has never been shown during training and validation, then your the result will be more trustworthy. And uh, we there's one critical step, that's the duplication. We make sure any base block that's already appeared in the training data set would never appear again in the validation or testing in order to make sure our uh, results make sense. Okay, this is the most important result. Uh, this is the shows the two LC curves. The blue one uses the approach based on the feature extraction, and the red one corresponds to our approach. We can see that is a bigger contrast. But that's not the biggest contrast. If you examine the O3, and you can see that the, the prior approach, the, their precision will degrade significantly, and our approach doesn't. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, noticeable that a lot of production systems, they indeed use a very high level optimization levels. I guess I don't have time uh, okay, this is very important. Uh, our training get, gets very good result after only 20 epochs, and each epoch only takes uh, 900 seconds. It's, uh, it's amazing considering uh, a laptop, right? 
And uh, the training time is less than six hours. And uh, the testing time for Pro basic block comparison is only 0.76 milliseconds. And uh, I guess we don't have time for this code containment problem, but we, we did uh, a lot of case studies. And this is some results of, about the word embedding. So sorry, I need to work away. Please refer to our papers for more details. The takeaway messages. NMT inspired code architecture binary code analysis indeed works very well. Then the question is, could uh, those uh, uh, techniques in NLP inspire other, uh, other taskers? And uh, another takeaway message is that it doesn't need uh, big data. We only use the 400K um, samples. And uh, a laptop works. And um, finally, we propose the first solution to cross-architecture code containment problem. Um, once we haven't verified that whether it works across LVM, GCC, and other compilers, this is our ongoing work. We have uh, publicized our trained model and the evaluation data sets. Welcome to uh, uh, reuse it. And uh, thank you. Hi, Shasha from UC Riverside. So I'm more interested in the neural network model part. So uh, for original Siamese neural network, I remember the two subnet should share same weight. So here, since you are comparing uh, for different architecture, so do you use different subnets for different architecture? We still make sure it's a Siamese. If it's a Siamese, it's a Siamese. It's a, the, the weight will be shared across uh, the two sides. Then how do you make, you have a different embedding for Oh. Yeah, that, that's actually a more general question about how SAMIS could be trained to handle this kind of similarity comparing task. So I, I think, I, I, yeah, it's, it's a general, very general question about SAMIS. Okay, then have, uh, I have uh, another question. So uh, a quick one. So what's the typical sequence length of the LSTM model? What's that? Say that again, sorry. Oh, so like for this uh, RN model, you have repeated units, right? What's the typical number of the units? What's the typical number of? Uh, like. Uh, oh, STM unit. We use two layers, two, only two layers. Three layers, we use three layers, but the, the, the performance would not uh, increase too much. We will increase a little bit. So we, we finally use the two layers of the network. work. Yeah, but how about the input size? You mean the, 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 the weights, right? Yeah. Um, we can accept the 500 or around 500 instructions. For, 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 for longer ones, we discard them. Okay, thank yeah. you. Hi, this is Wenchou from Rice University. Very interesting talk. Uh, so you apply this uh, translation-based technique to compare the model of two programs. Right. So I'm curious, can you use it for uh, direct translation so that we can port the a binary file to another architecture and prove that they are equivalent. Yeah, that's very interesting thinking, but the, the question is that how do you preserve uh, the semantics when you do this kind of translation? If you do this kind of OP code level translation, that's easy, but you should consider lots of other, other details like the offsets, memory address modes, and that kind of stuff. But, but that, that, yeah, that, that's very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Luca from Sapienza University of Roma. I was wondering uh, uh, what is the computational complexity when you compare two functions with respect to approach that are based on functions embeddings? That's a very good question. So that uh, complexity is O n times m. n means the, the number of base blocks in the query component M means the number of base blocks in the pro program P. Yeah, that's the complexity. But that's not our innovation. We do not claim that. <laughs> Malachi Jones uh, from MITRE. Quick question. So um, I know this is just talking about uh, our cross architecture, but I think a very interesting problem is even then with, within an architecture, different compilation levels, like your x86 would uh, full optimization versus less optimization. And so my question is, that have you looked at doing that work on that, seeing how well that works with just within architecture, figuring out similarities between uh, different optimization levels on the same code? Yeah, that, that's uh, actually, we already showed that in, uh, in the, this one. This is, you see, this is cross optimization levels. Okay. And the different cross uh, the 
this block size is. Okay. So that's the most uh, realistic uh, setting. I okay, think. cool. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. So let's thank our speaker one more time. Thanks. Thanks.